Hello, second graders. All right, let's get reading. We're on chapter nine and ten. Chapter nine. Milo and Jazz sat slumply in the stands. The cheerleaders were clapping and yelling as Wildcat Willie did cartwheels on the field. At last, Willie was happy. The way the game was going, he didn't have to worry about having to attend state finals. The substitute pitcher Tim was not doing too well. By the bottom of the fifth, the score was Eagle seven and Wildcats two. An ambulance was parked at the front, as the far end of the field. What's that for? Milo asked. In case the Eagles die laughing at Dylan's sub, Jazz didn't even smile at his joke. Oh, they have an ambulance at. All the games, just in case. She stared at the bench. Poor Dylan. Milo didn't want to think about Dylan or the Sox. His very first case, and he had failed. His gaze wandered to the ambulance again. E C N A L U B M A. It said in big letters across the hood. Mirror writing. Just like when he had tried to read the cover of the magazine on Jazz's porch, only this time it was the other way around. The letters were painted backwards so the drivers looking in their rearview mirrors could see it the right way. Ambulance. Suddenly, a thought hit Milo like a baseball to the head. Looking in the mirror, that was it. Jazz, he said. What does Chip love to do? Play tennis. Besides that, she shrugged. I don't know what. Chip loves to look at himself. Milo said. Whenever there's a mirror nearby, he looks in it. So, so there's a big mirror in the boys' locker room. What if he was looking in the mirror when he saw the thief? Seeing Jazz's puzzled look, he pulled his notebook out. Borrowing her her purple glitter pen, he wrote the substitute pitcher's name in big. Block letters. Tim. What does that spell? He asked her. Tim, of course. What is this? Kindergarten. Milo wrote M I T. What about that? He asked. She frowned. It doesn't spell anything. Yes, it does. It spells mitt. Mitt has two T's. I know that he said, and you know that. But does Chip the Champ know that? Jazz looked at him, but then she shook her head. Nobody could make a mistake like that. Milo thought about Chip globbing moose m o u s e into his hair and grinned. Oh yeah, he said. Somebody could. Together they ran down to the dugout where the coach was talking to the players. Maybe you should put Dylan in. P J said. P J was saying. Tim looked angry. You can't take me out, Coach. This was my chance to pitch. I won it fair and square. No, you didn't, Milo said. Everyone turned to look at him. You stole Dylan's lucky socks, he accused Tim. You wanted to mess up his pitching so the coach would put you in his place. Tim scowled. That's stupid. Not as stupid as a thief wearing a jacket with his name across his back. Jazz said. She smiled. We have a wit. We have an eyewitness. Chip saw you take the socks. All the players looked at Tim. Tim stared at Milo. His hands balled into fists. Milo took a step back. Then Tim's shoulders slumped. He kicked at the dirt on the dugout floor. I was going to give them back after the game. Now everyone looked at Dylan. Dylan was quiet for a moment. Then, after a glance at P.J., he laughed. They're all yours, Tim. He said. What do I want with a pair of stinky old socks? Coach, put me in. Chapter Ten. After the game, Dylan insisted on taking Milo and Jazz to Balua's for Sundays. When they walked in and cheer, a cheer went up. Wildcat Willie stopped by their booth, out of costume. Nice game, thrilling Dylan. Way to show those eagles. He thumped up. He thumped him on the shoulder. Milo recognized the redhead girl with Willie. Hey, where's Chip? Chip the chump? She laughed, probably home kissing himself in the mirror. I thought I'll try spending some time with somebody who looks at me. Smiling, the two walked off. 
Smiling, the two walked off. Yep. PJ slid into the booth with a burger and fries. I knew you'd pull it off, she said to Dylan. Dylan smiled at Jazz and Milo. I owe it all to these two here. The Sherlock's of socks. Milo's the one who solved the mystery. Jazz pointed her spoon at him and said, You know, for a kid who rolled around in dumpsters and tried to tie Velcro shoes, you're pretty smart. He laughed. Jazz really wasn't sure, wasn't such a know-it-all. Besides, without her help, he'd probably, probably still be stuck inside the dumpster with spaghetti in his hair. Actually, he was starting to like having her around. He was even getting used to all the purple. When Dylan went off to order another Sunday, Jazz said, So, the case of the stinky socks is closed. She looked a little sad. Almost, Milo said. We still need to, to write to Dash and tell him how we solved the mystery. Jazz looked at him. We? He grinned. Hey, every detective needs a partner, right? Definitely. Jazz smiled back at him. So, partners, Jazz said, what do you think our next case will be? I don't know. Maybe we'll break a spy code, a secret spy code, or find some buried pirate loot in this town. He reached for a Sunday and shrugged. Dash said, you never know when a new case will fall splat. They stared at each other. Most of the melted Sunday had landed on Milo. Jazz wiped a drip off her nose. We'll fall right into your lap, she finished. Uh, yeah. Handing him a napkin, she joked. Hey, it's not the first time we've been in a sticky situation. Milo laughed. Good point. And you know what? What? Something tells me it won't be the last. All right, super sleuthing strategies. A few days after Milo and Jazz wrote to Dash Marlowe, a letter arrived in the mail. Dash Marlowe. Greetings, Milo and Jazz. Nice work. No doubt about it. You're ready for another case. But while you wait for one to come along, why not pump up those sleuthing skills? Those, these mini mysteries and puzzles will give your brain the kind of workout Dylan needs Dylan gave the Eagles. Some of these mysteries are from my own files. Happy detecting. Milo dash Milo. Warm up. So here are a few brain stretchers to warm you up in case you get stumped. I put the answers well. I don't have to tell you where. You're detectives. Number one. Why are manholes, manhole covers round? Two. What do the numbers 11, 69, and 88 all have in common? 3. Some months have 31 days. How many have 28? And these are just a couple pages that you can read on your own. I think they're really cute. They have little mysteries for you because after all, this was a detective book. Thank you for reading with me and I will be back with the next book. Bye! We miss you. Miss Park misses you.